Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Setting Up a Home Car Workshop. So anyone who wants to set up a workshop and work on their cars at home. What I wanna do in today's video is cover the making of a turbo heat shield. It was actually a lot easier than I expected. It looks good and it works really, really well. But before I get into that, why would you need a turbo heat shield? Well, this classic photo shows the exhaust manifold of the turbo glowing bright red with heat. And not only that, the exhaust pipe off the turbo is glowing bright red as well. Now, if you've got anything in the engine bay that's anywhere near that sort of radiant heat, you're gonna cook it. And that's why all factory cars run lots and lots of heat shielding. In fact, you can see here's the heat shield and the bolt that connects it is even glowing red hot, but the heat shield is not. So how do you make it? Well, here's the end result. This is the heat shield that I made for the turbo I was putting on one of my cars. Everything was really tight under the bonnet, really close to the alternator. And this is the heat shield that you can see here that I've made. The exhaust pipe coming out of the turbine was also wrapped, but that's a different topic. So what material do you use? You need to get materials designed specifically for heat shield use. It comprises this sort of dimpled uh, steel, uh, galvanized steel, and in between the two layers, there's uh, material, there's insulating material that's trapped in between in the sandwich, if you like. Now, that material was sold for catalytic converter heat shields. It's sold as a general purpose heat shielding material, and it's durable enough to live right up near the turbine of the turbo. How do you work with it? Well, the good, good news is you can cut it with tin snips, as I have shown here. You can shape it with a hammer. Here I'm shaping uh, the edge of it by wrapping it over the edge of my bench and just hammering it to form a fold, to form an edge, which is downwards projecting. And here I'm using a dolly, just the sort of dolly you'd use in normal sheet metal work to again form it to a different shape. It's quite easy to work with. Uh, it, it, it's a lot easier than, than typical sheet metal to work with. It's vastly easier than, say, trying to make the heat shield out of stainless steel, which I have done in the past, which was awful because it keeps springing back. This is the material to get, and then it all becomes reasonably straightforward. Now, to show you what you can achieve, here's a curve that matches the shape of the turbine with that rolled flange, which allows me to connect it to other pieces and also helps hold it in place. And it was formed in this way over, I don't remember exactly, maybe 30 minutes, just using those tools, the dolly, the edge of the bench, and a normal lightweight panel beating hammer. Now, how do you connect it to the turbo? How do you hold it in place? You must hold it rigidly in place. And remember, it's gonna be getting very, very hot. Here's a sheet metal bracket that I folded up, and I also inserted some riv nuts, some captive nuts, so I could screw straight into those. Now, they've lived quite well. They're, they're steel uh, riv nuts, not, not aluminium. They're steel riv nuts, and they've lived quite well over the last 30,000 Ks of, of fairly hard driving. So here are the two components that I made, the two parts. Um, you can see that this panel here is held with to this panel by means of brackets and then normal pop rivets on the outside. And this is a separate bit. It had to be made in multiple parts so that when you actually put it on the turbo, you could actually get it into position before you did up those bolts that I was showing earlier. Here's a close up of the corner. You can see the wrapped around flange. You can see that inside there, there's a right angled bracket and pop rivets with washers to hold the heat shield together in that sort of orientation. And here's the final version. You can see those two different pieces. In situ on the car, the arrow points to the alternator, which you can see is very close to the turbo. Uh, this car never originally had either a turbo or an alternator and to fit everything in is very, very squeezy. And so that heat shield was an absolute necessity if the alternator was to live. The book's called Setting Up a Home Car Workshop. Lots of tips and hints in that book if you love working on your own car at home, either for maintenance or for modification. Thank you.